Labour MP Stephen Kinner. Good afternoon, Stephen. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Hi. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, I guess you're pleased with this outcome, right? No, I think it's an absolute mess and a shambles, but it was always going to happen because it's such a poorly thought through policy that was never actually going to work in, in terms of deterring people from crossing the channel on small boats. I think there's almost 500 people already this week that have crossed. So the threat of the Rwanda deportation scheme clearly hasn't worked. And right, so many, 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 many... It's 500,000 pounds of taxpayers' money in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Um, it doesn't strike me as a very good use of taxpayers' money. I, I wouldn't disagree with that, but I would say this, and this is... I, I was listening to you this morning in Julia Hartley Brewer's breakfast show, and I counted her asking you 27 times. And I've got many, many, many people asking this. And I think one thing I said the other day to Wes Streeting, I want Labour to explain to me why I should vote for them. Hi, Jez. Could somebody please get Stephen Kinnock to explain what actually the Labour Party would do to stop the boats? We would like to hear a constructive argument from Labour about what they would do about an immigration problem that a majority of people in this country are fed up to the back teeth with. That's the first question. Shall I give you the second one or wait for your answer to that one? I'm happy to take that one first. Okay. Uh, whatever that All right. You, what would Labour policy be? 444 people yesterday on Tuesday on small boats. The British Isles, the United Kingdom, it's always the last place. For all those people who say I've got relatives, there are many who are not genuine refugees. They are economic migrants. What would Labour do to stop something that needs dealing with? Just to be really clear about the numbers, we process uh, asylum applications in this country and somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of them are classed as valid refugees. And they are people who are then given leave to remain because they are classed by the British authorities mm -hmm. as having uh, been fleeing persecution and violence. The re remaining 25 percent should be sent back to the countries that they came from. Okay. Now, the problem is that uh, when we left the European Union, we left the Dublin regulation because the Prime Minister made a complete dog's breakfast of negotiating Brexit, he didn't negotiate a successor to Dublin. So we've got no way of returning the people whose asylum applications are unsuccessful because there's no returns agreement, no successor to Dublin. So that's the first thing. We need a Labour government which actually has a constructive partnership and dialogue with other governments, particularly uh, in the EU, so that we can get a successor to Dublin and a returns agreement. That makes it sound like you want to rejoin the EU, Stephen. No, you have to have... There's lots of countries around the world that are not members of the EU, but which have returns agreements with others. For example, the, the agreement between Greece and Turkey. Uh, as you'll know, Jeremy, Turkey is not a member of state of the no. European Union. They had a returns agreement with the EU. You, so you, talk, about, you talk about 25%. Many of my audience are frustrated that there's a massive cost of living crisis, something that the Labour Party would know too well about. And yet people are coming ashore and they're being filmed, and they're not in small numbers, by the way, who don't have their paperwork. And if they do, they burn it. They disappear into our society whilst legal eagles hold up the system for years. They get married, they have kids, and we don't know anything about it. Now, I sat on a show last night and got told by a Labour activist that I, I have no sympathy and I don't understand these people's perils. And they keep telling me about war-torn countries. I had a man on yesterday from Chad, absolutely had to escape the persecution and torture in Chad and come to this country. And like the Ukrainians, we opened our doors with open arms. But why is it that people like you will not accept that there are young men getting on boats, dangerously by the way, coming to this country because they know they can take advantage of a benefits and welfare system that surprisingly is creaking and not giving to the real people across this country who desperately need it. That's what I don't understand. Well, I absolutely do accept that. As I've just said, about 75% of the people who apply for asylum are successful as judged by Home Office decision makers, because there is clear and overwhelming evidence that they are fleeing war, violence and persecution. 25% of them are not valid asylum uh, applications and they should be returned. They should not stay in our country. How many migrants do you believe? How many, how many migrants, immigrants do you think we should take? It is impossible to put a number on it, uh, Jeremy, because it depends on all sorts of events going on around the world. More wars, uh, terror, persecution, persecution. Let's of not people talk about wars Christians and persecution. Let's talk it's about economic. Put... Would you have economic migrants stay in this country? Economic migrants only come here on the best, should only come here on the basis of a point based immigration system, which is in place and well established, created, by the way, by a Labour government in 2008 
It now applies to the whole world. Of course, we had free movement when we were in the European Union. We no longer are. So now everybody that comes to this country for work-based reasons has to have a visa, and that has to be based on points that you get by uh, having a job, a sponsor employer, and being able to speak English. And that is as it should be. Labour supports that system uh, completely. Asylum is a very, very different thing. It's people who are fleeing war, violence, and persecution. Uh, and that is, I think, every country in the world has signed up to having responsibilities. And, and we, of course, have to live up to those responsibilities. But the problem is that the system here is broken because Priti Patel's completely taken her eye off the ball. And we've seen a massive drop in the number of asylum applications for the process. We have 37,000 asylum seekers in hotels costing the taxpayer four million pounds a day five um so let's five, focus actually. on that do the nitty-gritty work five. rather than chasing headlines with policies that aren't going to work two other questions really appreciate being on Stephen as ever um uh, labor is so involved with the unions the news that next week three days of train strikes will disrupt a summer of discontent ahead uh, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a general sector of the rmt who says he's glad and hopes there are more strikes what's your position i do not want those strikes to go ahead uh, I want our rail system to work and I want the people who need to get to work, who need to do whatever they need to do to get on with their lives. They need a functioning rail system. Uh, the reality, though, is we have a government that I think actually wants these strikes to happen so that they can have more division and more bust ups and more shouting from various quarters. And that seems to be what Boris Johnson thrives on. So uh, they need a, the government needs to encourage uh, the unions and the employers to get round the table and get this deal sorted so that those strikes can be averted. Uh, and Stephen, could I ask Stephen Kinnock his views on Partygate, as he, of course, was one of the first to breach lockdown with his father's birthday party. What's your answer to that from Gareth in Essex? Well, if, I don't know if people have followed this in the news, but my, my mother is um, suffering from I'm sorry, I know uh, Alzheimer's uh, and uh, I was caring for them when I went round there. The, that had actually gone from where I'm based in London, so it was not a drive from South Wales. It was a three-mile drive to deliver some uh, food and, and medicines, but I do accept that the tweet I put out was easily misinterpreted, and I, I regret that because I should have said in the tweet that I was actually just going there to keep an eye on them and see if they were okay, my elderly parents. Um, and I can see why that may have been misinterpreted. I'm, I am sorry about that. But uh, I appreciate your honesty, though, party. Stephen. I appreciate your honesty, though, because you, you haven't batted away any of that. I think the frustration over Rwanda, i just like to say as well, to finish, I, I'm not saying, by the way, that it might be the best policy, but I think there has to I mean, There was a YouGov poll, wasn't there, on, on Monday night. A majority of British people in this country, it was the elephant in the room for years. We've got 30 seconds, but people want something done about immigration because we are creaking at the seams and people are struggling. You must understand that. We need an immigration system that is firm, fair and well managed. And that is important both for the people who come to our country so that they're accepted here in a welcoming and warm way and for the people who live in our country because there is very stretched resources and we've got to build confidence in the system, uh, not have a big fight about it. So let's get back Stephen. around the table. Let's be sensible. Thank